Found floating in the sea miles from Marseille, Jason Bourne awakens on a small shipping vessel to find two bullet holes in his back, the number to a Swiss bank account in his hip, and a severe case of amnesia. Miles away in Langley, Virginia, CIA black ops operator Alexander Conklin learns that one of his agents has failed to assassinate a high-priority target in Marseille. Anne has just turned up at a bank in Zurich, Switzerland to clean out his safety deposit box. The only thing Bourne has to go on as to who he is is a passport that points him in the direction of an apartment in Paris. Conklin believes Bourne has gone rogue and has sent a slew of trained killers to go and take him down in Paris. With very little information, his bare primal instincts and a, b a beautiful gypsy named Marie can Bourne regain his memory before he becomes another casualty in the history of the CIA's target list? Loosely based off of the bestseller by Robert Ludlum, director and co-producer Doug Lehman's Bourne Identity serves as another staple in the espionage thriller genre that blends exotic locations, mind-bending plot twists, and edge-of-your-seat action seamlessly together. While crafting together an action hero, that rivals the talents of James Bond and Mission Impossible's Ethan Hunt with Jason Bourne. He's not a sophisticated man. He doesn't have a lot of high-tech gadgets and gizmos at his disposal. Just his natural instincts and whatever he manages to get his hands on to help him out of a sticky, a sticky situation. And this is what I find very appealing about the character himself and the plot himself. The whole ticking clock is how is Bourne going to manage to keep himself and this girl Marie alive? Actually, the locations in this movie aren't all that exotic, with the exception of the ending in Italy and a few sequences in Zurich. Most of the film was actually shot on location in the city of Paris, and I'm glad the producers decided to actually go to Paris to shoot this movie, and not just because the movie's set in France. I don't know about you guys, but I just hate it when I watch a movie, and this part is supposed to take place in this city, and in one city, but it was really shot in a different city, in a different country, sometimes even halfway around the world. If you're really into this movie, then having it filmed on location can help immerse you even more into the film and give you a feeling that you're really in the movie, alongside Bourne in his quest for answers. As another contrast to the James Bond and the Mission Impossible movies, the action is not too over the top, but rather done in a fashion that blends the restraint of a low-budget indie film and the quick cutting and special, special effects usage of a big-budget Hollywood blockbuster. It comes and goes quickly and, in some cases, rather brutally, even for a PG-13 rated film. Most of the action sequences are, you know, over in about two, three minutes, which is a good thing. For a movie like this, you know, with so, with these characters and it contains so many different twists and turns in the plot you can't go pedal to the metal for the action and have it go on for like five or ten minutes plus the fact that they're all shot very appropriately from the up close and claustrophobic nature of the apartment fight sequence between Bourne and agent castell to the wide open and distant hunter killer chase sequence between Bourne and another assassin the professor I think the longest action sequence in this entire movie is the car chase sequence where Bourne is trying to get away from the Paris police in Marie's beat up old Mini Cooper. The sequence goes on for about a good four and a half plus minutes, you know, and Bourne going down back alleys and sidewalks and even the wrong way down a one way road. And the scene is nicely paced by not only the quick cuts, but also Bourne's evasive maneuvers and Paul Oakenfold's race day go playing in the background. I think my personal favorite action sequence in the entire movie comes before the car chase. It's when Bourne is having that little fight scene with Castell after he crash lands into his apartment. Because, you know, all the other action sequences in the movie, like the little escape from the embassy scene, you can see it coming. The, the car chase, you can pretty much see it coming. But this fight sequence, it comes from literally out of nowhere. You know, born senses that there's somebody sneaking around to his apartment with deadly intent intent so he goes to check to investigate around the area and finds nothing and then everything goes completely quiet with the exception of marie when you know what i'll just show you guys the entire sequence during the end credits now 
Now, since I mentioned the music earlier, Paul Oakenfold, the score is an edgy mixture of urban techno beats and movie composition music nicely done by none other than John Powell, who had also scored John Woo's Face Off. Every note, every beat matches the scene perfectly. And one last thing I want to talk about the movie is the acting. Certainly it's not going to win any Oscars, but all the actors do their jobs sufficiently to the point that you can believe these actors are who they're supposed to be playing. They are these characters. They are these people, basically. I can tell you the license plate numbers of all six cars outside. I can tell you that our waitress is left-handed and the guy sitting up at the counter weighs 215 pounds and knows how to handle himself. I know the best place to look for a gun is the cab of the gray truck outside. And at this altitude, I can run flat out for a half mile before my hands start shaking. Now, why would I know that? How can I know that and not know who I am? This is not my current address, okay? This was my current address until two days ago when I started spending in line outside. Now, I lose my apartment, okay? That means no address, no phone, no money, no time, I still have no visa. You better start filling in the blanks here. Because I thought we were on the same side. Whose side is that? Boy, you don't know what you're doing, do you, Jason? You don't have a goddamn clue. Who am I? You're a U.S. government property. You're a malfunctioning $30 million weapon. I walk a lot like you. We always walk a lot. Who me? Who are you, Bob? Paris? Treadstone. Both of us. Treadstone? Which one? Paris. I live in Paris. Did you get the headaches? Yeah. I get such bad headaches. You know, at night when you drive in the car. I don't know, maybe it's something to do with the headlights. What is Treadstone? Treadstone said pills. They said go to Paris. Is Treadstone in Paris? Look at this. Look at whatever you give. If you want to kill me, you better kill me the first time. You better kill me dead. You better kill me when I'm in my sleep. Nikona, listen to me. We need these people. It's hard enough getting people that we know to help us. We need to be careful. We? No, you. You need to bring me back that bastard kid's head, put it out in front of this house, and show them what kind of war we are fighting. So, bottom line, if you're looking for a good thinking man's spy film, or an action thriller, or a good alternative to James Bond and Mission Impossible, I highly recommend The Bourne Identity. What is it? Something wrong? <laughs>